Thanks. Hello, everyone. Guten Tag. How are all of you doing? Good. And are you enjoying OSDC? Cool. Um, thank you very much for attending my talk on TikTok, what the heck is time series data. Before we go any further, I would like to know the demographics of this room a little bit. So how many of you are working as back-end engineers? Okay. Um, how many of you are working as uh, data engineers? Data scientists, perhaps? Okay. And how many of you have worked with databases before? Okay, most, most of you, that's good. Which ones? <laughs> um, what other databases have you guys worked with before? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> okay. Um, today we will talk about a couple of topics which include time series data, what it is, and how its workload differs from other forms of data different use cases uh, where time series data is being used widely these days. Then we have how CreateDB helps in dealing with machine data and what are the technical aspects that make it so efficient. Then we are gonna shortly talk about CreateDB running on Microsoft Azure and the different things that you can do with it. And finally, a case study about a smart factory that we have been working with over the past few years and then we'll query some machine data. My name is Tane Pant, and I currently work as a developer advocate at Create.io. I love working with time series data, especially machine and sensor data. Uh, I'm a tech speaker for Mozilla and volunteer to their various projects in my spare time. I've published books on Firefox OS, building a virtual assistant for Raspberry Pi, and web-based virtual reality. I'm also an Intel software innovator in the field of IoT. And towards this end, uh, end of this presentation, I will share my Twitter handle and my email. So if you have any questions even after the event or if you have any interesting project ideas, I'd be happy to collaborate. So let's get started. That's the million dollar question. What is time series data? And most importantly, how does it differ from other forms of data? To answer this question, imagine a sensor and this sensor is sending streams of data over a period of time. If you were to plot this data, then one of these axes in the visualization would be time. And as compared to other workloads, this data is not usually added as an update to the database. Time series data is added as an insert, and this is the primary way of adding it to a time series database. And time series databases basically introduce efficiencies by treating time as a first class citizen. And this allows you to, in, to delve into all the aspects of your operation, having this rich amount of historical data, such as analyzing the past, monitoring the present, and also predicting the future. Now that we have an idea of what time series data is, what it looks like, uh, let's play a game that I like to call time series or not. So does the data visualized by this graph denote time series data? Yes, no, no, correct, awesome. Um, time series or not? Yes, one last one, uh, time series or not? Yes, um, now if you take an abstract look at the different use cases of time series and the kind of data generated, you can categorize them roughly into two types. So first of all, we have IT and system monitoring. And this can be termed as the traditional use case of time series databases. So if you look at its characteristics, you can say that it has tens of hundreds of metrics or sensors. It has real-time write functionality, rarity of complex queries, and data volumes that often fall in gigabytes. So InfluxDB is a really good example for this kind of uh, da for database in this category. And then we have industrial sensor data. And this is an emerging sector that I feel has not been talked about enough. So this is usually characterized through hundreds of thousands of sensors or metrics and real-time queries that are under highly concurrent load and must access gigabytes uh, and to up to hundreds of terabytes of data. And CreateDB is an especially good fit for this category. There are some other characteristics that uh, 
separate the two use cases, like projects that fall under the last category tend to be internal IT projects, and the data in the database itself is often not that mission critical. And the projects that fall in the latter category are often mission critical. They are transformative and enable real-time data-driven decision systems. Have anybody used CreateDB before or maybe heard of it? No, no one. OK, so let's start off by going into the heart of the honeycomb to the core technology and talk about what CreateDB is and what makes it stand apart from the various other databases in its segment. So CreateDB is a new kind of distributed SQL database that is best suited for handling industrial sensor data due to its ease of use and ability to work with many different terabytes of data with thousands of different sensor data structures. So CreateDB uniquely combines SQL with NoSQL benefits, and it operates on a shared nothing architecture. CreateDB supports distributed SQL with full-text search, geospatial queries, uh, and also aggregations. And various nodes in a CreateDB cluster coordinate seamlessly with each other. And the execution of write and query operations are automatically distributed throughout the nodes in the cluster. So CreateDB has columnar caches uh, for real-time in-memory SQL query performance. So real-time databases usually require all the data to fit in the main memory, but that limits how much data you can manage. Our solution for real-time performance is, uh, without data volume limitations, is to implement memory resident columnar field caches on each node. So the caches tell the query engine whether there are records on that node that meet the query criteria and where the records are located. So this is all performed at in-memory speed. And distributed query, uh, distributed query processing also contributes to fast performance and a query planner that makes really smart decisions about which nodes are best suited to perform different aggregations and joins. And it has machine data specific features with a cloud native architecture, which allows it to run uh, seamlessly on cloud, on the edge, or on the premise. Let's take a quick look at some of the salient features which make CreateDB what it is like. So CreateDB is quite simple to install. You can spawn an instance of CreateDB with a single line on your terminal or on Docker. CreateDB is ENSI SQL compatible, including joins and Postgres wire, which makes integration with tools such as Grafana really easy with the Postgres wire. And this also prevents lock-in. It has a distributed query engine which supports full text queries and is real time. And it supports all kinds of data, including structured data, JSON, time series data, geospatial data, and even blob tables. It runs on commodity hardware and economical instances and is really easy to scale out. This architecture is really well suited to containerization, meaning a cluster running on Kubernetes can be scaled up or down just using a kubectl scale command. So scale up operations can take minutes instead of hours. Sharding, replication, and rebalancing of data as the cluster size changes is automated. And finally, these features prevent lock-in and allow you to interface with your favorite tools running wherever you prefer. So our motto is put machine data to work. And every day, millions and billions of data points are generated by sensors, smart factories, health industries, security applications, and so on. And this data needs to be ingested in real time. And this data tends to be complex and can be in many different structures and forms. This data has valuable insights about the operation, which can be obtained from it by performing analytics on the data in real time. Queries like aggregation and time series analysis along with machine learning or predictive analytical models are often applied on this data. And the insights produced by these analytical operations can be used to take action to improve the efficiency and functioning of these various industries, hence causing significant cost reductions. So the differentiating factor that should be kept in mind as compared to other time series use cases is that these real-time queries are under highly concurrent load for stream processing or machine learning and must access gigabytes to hundreds of terabytes of data. And it's a machine data world. And machine data means explosive growth. In 2018, we saw a boom in the number of IoT devices and their use cases. 
there was an increase in the use of IoT and sensors in different contexts such as smart factories and smart cities. And the total number of IoT devices is moving towards 20 billion by the year 2020. And every second, another 127 new devices are being connected to the internet. As an example, take a Boeing 787, which generates about half a terabyte of data during a single flight. And if we talk about the plastic manufacturing industry, for example, there's a wide array of data being produced per bottle. And then there's data per production line with about 10 production lines per plant. And this data is being generated by around 950 sensor types. And that's just one factory. And this particular company that I'm talking about has 180 factories in around 45 countries. That means data on billions of bottles. So we will talk more about this company in a while and look, take a look at the data generated by it. So CrateDB basically excels at handling velocity, volume, and diversity of huge industrial time series use cases. For example, industrial sensors often increase the frequency of their measurements when values exceed the expected thresholds. And with multiple sensors, cascading failures can cause in huge data ingestion spikes. And CrateDB is able to handle this, these spikes without sacri sacrificing any query performance, meaning that your reporting and analysis tools won't fail just when you need them the most. This fire hose of complex data needs to be handled in real time. Let's talk about the next layer of the honeycomb uh, that is built on the core CrateDB technology and is called CrateDB Cloud, also known as CrateDB on Microsoft Azure. Any Azure users here by any chance? Just two? OK. Um, CrateDB Cloud is a scalable SQL service hosted on Azure and operated 24-7 by experts at CrateIO. It is ideal for industrial time series data processing and other IoT and machine data specific workloads. So some of the salient features of CrateDB Cloud are it has real-time query performance for partitioning, parallel processing, in-memory, columnar indexes, which enable real-time complex analytics and AI, not just time series aggregates. And it has really good uh, integration with Azure IoT ecosystem with built-in interfaces to Azure IoT Hub, MQTT, Postgres via protocol, JDBC, REST, and a native .NET core driver. And it is a fully managed cloud service, which is secured, scaled from the silicon up, and operated 24-7 by Crate.io on Microsoft Azure. Now, as promised, I would like to share with you a story of one of our customers named Alpla. Have anybody of you heard of them before? No. OK, let me introduce you to them. So most of the people in this world have their products in their hand at least once a week, be it Coca-Cola, Head & Shoulders, or Dove. Alpla is really well known in the consumer packaged goods market for its innovative packaging system bottles, closures, and injection molded parts, and we have been working with them over the past three years. They have sensors for temperature, pressure, blending ratios, and other settings that need to be really precise on every machine. And when these settings are right, high quality products are the result. And when these settings are off, quality suffers and production costs increase. In the past, discovering issues involved multiple people to be continuously moving around the factory floor, checking up on the LED machines on each uh, LED lights on each machine to see if it's blinking or not. And as production lines are laid over the entire factory floor, and these factories do tend to be quite large in size, um, distances between machines can be considerable, meaning that this was a really slow and labor-intensive operation. Additionally, the latency introduced by having to walk around the factory floor meant that products were often affected by a defect even before the error was spotted by the operator. So this resulted in loss of valuable machine time and also raw, uh, loss of raw material as defective material gets produced unless the problems are fixed. So Alpla's market entry in 2001 was followed by years of tremendous growth. In 2015, uh, they were already operating 14 manufacturing plants with more than 1,000 employees in USA. So this, with this growth came the challenge of hiring and training enough personnel to run the different complex manufacturing processes. And because modern manufacturing machines each have their own different complex interfaces, every plant required specially trained uh, experts for every machine on every shift. 
And as a result of rapid growth, database performance uh, degraded, and response time for queries got longer, and any analytics work on the data was taking more and more time. Real-time actionable guidance on the production flow was no longer possible. So Create.io built their proof of concept on the top of CreateDB Cloud and enabled them to drive technological transformations. So I would like to share with you now how the machine data from Alpla looks like, and then we'll do some queries over the machine data. Is it visible in the back? No? OK, so this is what uh, admin UI of CreateDB looks like. So this is the front page, and you can see basic information, such as health of the cluster, replicated data, how much data is available, how many records are there in the database. So we have 2.7 billion records here, and how many nodes are present in this cluster. So we have a five-node cluster here. And we have different panels for different functions. So we have a console planner here for entering our queries on the cluster. And we have here the table section, which basically shows you the different tables that are present. So let's take a look at this and understand how this whole operation and of the data platform works. So to show you how this works, I would like to take you through the flow of the data. So if we go down here, you will see that we have a couple of different tables named raw underscore something. So basically, what happens is each plant out of these 180 plants, so we are implemented in around 18 of them right now. So each plant sends raw data from their sensors to create DB. And it creates a table like this. And um, these, these are di basically different names for different plants. So if you see here, this, is, this data is coming from the Florida plant. Uh, we have data coming on from the Iowa plant. I wonder what's causing that. Hmm. Yeah? I think I should be audible without this. Oh, let's try again. Um, and then we have here, for example, data coming in from the McDonald plant. So let's open one of these tables. So this will show you here the health of the table, the configured shards. So it's uh, CreateDB creates a default of four shards unless specified otherwise. And we have uh, total records of 24.6 million data points. So this shows the different partitions and the schema. So let's query this data and see what it actually looks like. So here we have only four columns. We have just a, a parti uh, table, which is a partition with the help of month. Then we have a payload, which is basically a JSON object, and it has nestings within it. There's a topic, and then there is the timestamp of when the data was inserted into CreateDB. So let's take a look at this payload. Here you can see it's basically just a JSON object, and it has really different information about the machine that it is coming from. And this path also gives us some other kinds of information, like, OK, this is coming from a plant. That's the name of the plant. It's coming from the production line one on the A side, and the number of sensor is nine. And this is the topic that we are seeing here is bottle underscore counts. Let's take a look at a different uh, topic and have a look at its object. So if you take a look at this, you would realize that this is not exactly similar in structure to the one above. And this is made possible with something called dynamic uh, object typing with the help of CreateDB. So even if different data points entering the same column have a different structure, you can still place them within a single table. So once we have this raw data, what CreateDB's data platform does is it takes this data and it starts a process of enrichment of this data. And what it basically does is it takes different nested objects, it creates a new table for each of them, a new column for each of them, 
and it makes it strongly typed. So once these objects are strongly typed, they are even much more performant on CreateDB when we run queries on them. So this enrichment process gives us um, gives us new table, which is called metric table, and the data from different uh, raw data from different factories is being then enriched and fed into this table. So let's take a look at this table and see what it looks like. So as you can see, we have we end up with much more columns than before, and most of them are null because uh, maybe this these records did not have the kind of uh, nesting that was present in other objects. And this doesn't affect the performance of querying on CreateDB. So let's run some queries on this. So I prepared some queries beforehand. I'll quickly copy paste them. So this is just a very basic operation. We are doing an average of a nested object from this table where type is vision, vision rejects module. So we're going to execute this query, and it's running over about 1.2 billion records. And it gives us a result in just 4.2 seconds. Let's take, since we were talking about the use case of smart factories, let's do a more suitable query on this. So what this query does is it basically tells me all the alarms that went off or what the units they were, these alarms were coming from and what was the machine model. And for some reason, I put some constraints on this data, like machine model should be BMU 2000, uh, 200. The type should be alarm. Then I also asked it to be grouped uh, and ordered. So this is a sub-second query here again. And this gives us the result that we were looking for. Let's take a look at one last query before moving on. So what we are looking for here is I want to look. So this is some of the things that are really used by Alpla in their messaging and alerting system. So here we are looking for production line. And then we are looking for the downtime reason, when the downtime of a particular component started, how long it, when it was finished, how long it lasted, and how old it is in terms of hours. And then we have a few constraints on this data that we want the type to be downtime, location should be the McDonough plant, um, that downtime should not be null, and then I, I also asked it to be ordered by timestamp in a descending fashion. And it's again a sub-second query. It takes just two, 0 0.2 seconds uh, to run over 1.2 billion records of data. And here we get information that we were looking for about the downtime, when it started, uh, how long did the downtime last, and how old is the downtime. And if we take a look at the cluster panel of this admin UI, you will see that we are running over just five nodes, each running over 15 gigs of RAM with eight CPU core processors. And with just this, we are able to, uh, able to achieve sub-second uh, query performance over a large amount of data. So every plant that was using CreateDB saw improvements in the net equipment efficiency with some efficiencies above 90%. So that is a metric that they were using for how productive or how efficient their factories are. And every plant also saw a reduction in manual process adjustments as much as by 50%. And reducing the number of manual adjustments stabilizes the process and significantly improves production efficiency. So the result was a six-figure saving just in 2018. And currently, they make about 2.5 million queries per day, and work hasn't even finished yet. It is estimated to increase about 18 times by the end of 2020. So with this, I would like to conclude today's session on TikTok, what the heck is time series data? So today we learned about time series data, its broad use cases, CreateDB for machine data use cases, CreateDB on Azure, and finally did a case study on how huge amounts of time series data is handled by a smart factory like Alpla. If you'd like to play around with CreateDB clusters on Azure, feel free to get in touch with me and we will set you up. So we are in this booming age of data, so why not put it to work to make our lives easier, safer, and better? I look forward to seeing what you do with this. Thank you. So thank you very much, Tanai. Um, are there any questions? Uh, so after 
first processing of the data, so the nested objects uh, or those null columns, mm -hmm. do they actually use still space in terms of yeah, setting some sort of a null bit somewhere in memory or on disk or anything? Because in terms of MySQL would still reserve the space of the column like character whatsoever. So do they use that space if it is null or not? Uh, so they do not use any any extra space. And Otherwise, that would be a lot of extra data that would be mm, held by. Welcome to MySQL. <laughs> um, uh, and another question. So uh, you're offering hosted services on pre uh, just on Azure, or do you have something like also on other cloud, public cloud platforms? So uh, currently, we are only offering hosted services on Azure, but we have a couple of other major major providers in our roadmap as well. So probably later on in this year. But you can always use, if you want to host your own clusters, that's also possible. But for now, yes, only Azure. So questions answered? Yeah. Any further questions? OK. Ah, OK. Uh, hi. Hey. Thanks for the talk. Um, would you personally recommend this also for kind of the the first type of metrics that you were talking about from just the normal computer, CPU, stuff like that? So, like, it really depends on your use case. So, when CreateDB started off, like, we, we still have a lot of different clients who are not per se in a machine data scenario. Like, uh, for example, we started working with McAfee, and they have also huge streams of data coming in, right? Like people submitting and you know, different kinds of files for uh, virus scans and so on. And they, they, I think they were using PostgreSQL before that and uh, deploying a great cluster helped them take down their costs and machinery by about 75%. So I would really say it quite depends on how, how, how much data is to be ingested. And um, yeah, like that's. I think that's one of the major points. So how how heavy or uh, data intensive the processes are. And on the cluster that you just demoed, what's mm -hmm. the the storage capacity of it? You said the the CPU and memory, but what's that? I am not sure about it. I can check it with the, uh, Rough, the roughly. So I think they have about. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm entirely correct, but about five TBs of storage capacity on each machine. But I will check that. <laughs> Thanks. So I just checked uh, the clock. We have time. We would have time for another question. Anyone? Okay. So I say thank you very much to Danai. Thank you.